Welcome back to This is Van Color. My name is Mo Amir. Our featured guest tonight is a Leo award-winning Canadian media personality, a local legend here in Vancouver, one of the kindest people you'll meet in the industry. You know her as the former host of City TV's Breakfast Television and the long-standing host of Shaw's Urban Rush, which later became The Rush. She's interviewed about 25,000 people, I fact-checked this, from Hollywood A-listers to prime ministers to rock stars, Regis Philbin once told her, you've got something, kid. She is Vancouver's own Fiona Forbes. Fiona, thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. And I always get a little bit, uh, well, I start blushing when you say nice things about me, Mo. Thank you so much. The AC is also on the fritz, so that might happen. Yeah, if I'm a little schwetty, as we get... <laughs> <laughs> We're in the middle of summer here, but thank you for having me. We are in the middle of summer. So in 2022, post-lockdown, looking at Vancouver and the city of Vancouver as we come out of, you know, the COVID restrictions that we had. What's your assessment of Vancouver being fun? Are we still kind of a no fun city or is that moniker or that label overblown? Well, you know, we are a trailblazer when it comes to be called in a no fun city. I don't know where it came from, <laughs> yeah. but it goes back a couple of decades at least. I remember mm. hearing that first. But to answer your question, yes and no. And I know that's the most annoying answer, but I do think that we're in a fun city. I mean, look around yourself anytime we're here downtown. You can see the mountains, the ocean, the sun is shining. There's mm -hmm. so many incredible restaurants. We're spoiled in Vancouver with all the great food and fresh produce we have. But yeah, I think we put some blockades in front of ourselves sometimes, uh, whether it's, you know, politics that stand in the way or people just complaining in the way that we really do stand in the way of ourselves of having as much fun as we should have in such a beautiful place like Vancouver. Right. And so I feel like as you mentioned on the nature side, you know, there's so much to do here. And then if you want to spend money, there's also a lot to do here. But there's that stuff in the middle, especially when we talk about arts and culture, where I feel like we're lacking and we're starting to see some spaces shrink and even, you know, things that we used to do 10 years ago, maybe aren't around anymore. What are you thinking about when you're thinking about us being less fun. Well, you hit the nail on the head there with arts and culture, because for me, that's what I think is shrinking in Vancouver. And a lot of opportunities are being lost. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's it kind of puts a target on yourself when you pick on a certain thing in Vancouver, but I'm going to do it right now. Do it. Let's take the Granville Entertainment District, for example. In its heyday, and yes, I'm a little older people, I remember the Granville Entertainment District being theater culture, mm. arts, entertainment. It still is because, of course, we have the beautiful Orpheum Theatre, yeah. amongst other things, on Granville Street. And the Vogue Theatre, a nice dusty theatre to catch a show as well. Uh, yeah, and they're beautiful heritage buildings. But now I think I think the experiment with the Granville Entertainment District isn't working. And that's just my Ooh, opinion. that's a hot take. It's a hot take. But, you know, uh, as, as a woman, I don't feel safe at night walking down Granville Street when it's, you know, a week uh, or a week night or even the weekend when people are drinking and partying and I know that's what it's for mm -hmm. but I don't think in a city like Vancouver you should feel unsafe walking alone at that time of night what resources we're putting in to police it I think is ridiculous because it's all drinking fighting that the problems are and uh, for example I had some relatives visiting from the UK and mm -hmm. they had not they love Vancouver they had not been here in a decade my first relatives uh, to visit since the pandemic and I've never really had to to tell people to stay away from a certain part of town like that, but they were going to stay in that area. And I said, you know what? I don't think that. I th oh, we yeah, had to stay in that yeah, area. Like, they didn't know, tough, right? Tough one, yeah. And then we went to the Orpheum <laughs> Theater to see the VSO, which is uh, such an incredible thing to do in this city. But as we were leaving, seeing Singing in the Rain of all things, <laughs> very Vancouver. Yeah. But when we were walking out of the Orpheum, we walked into the melee of a Friday night downtown in the Granville Entertainment District. And right. I was dodging barf in the streets and people were fighting right in front of us. And it's just it's just not what I see our city being, you know, that street, if it went back to focus more on our, and of course there's some great places, there's some great venues Absolutely, and restaurants yeah. and stuff, but it really is when it gets out of control, it's catering to a certain demographic that just wants to party. And there's so many other places you could do that or spread it out a little bit. So right. all the problems aren't in one place. Yeah, absolutely. So do you think it's a, it's a problem and this might get me in trouble, but do you think it's a problem with the people of Vancouver or is there something more? And the reason why I point out 
about the people of Vancouver is when I meet people who have just moved here, they end up making friends with also with people who have also just moved here. And they say that it's tough to meet people. It's tough to break into so social circles. And we're just not as friendly as we might think that we are. So do you think that's part of the problem or is it something more? I think... I think it's part of the problem, for sure. I think that people in Vancouver, we all consider ourselves friendly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to include myself in that. But every one of us has our group of friends. And when you are in Vancouver, say, out for dinner, it's it's very rare or unwelcome that the other table starts talking to you, might join in, meet new people. If you go to another city, uh, Montreal, Toronto, New York, mm -hmm. L.A., it's very common at dinner that people enjoy each other's company, not just the company that they're with. And I remember this when I was younger. It's the same way now that I think that Vancouver is just very cliquey and it's so hard to break into those cliques and meet new people, whether you're looking to meet new friends, whether you're looking to date. We're just antisocial. We're in our own groups right. and we kind of keep it there, which is which is a very Vancouver thing, but it's not very friendly. So I decided to do a little social experiment. This started a couple of months ago before we were even going to talk about this. Okay. But I decided, well, I'm going to start saying hello hello to everybody and smile and say good morning <laughs> to everybody on my morning walk with my dog. Love it. It's surprising to me how many people get alarmed <laughs> by a simple hello. They're like, what, are they, what, what, what does she want from me? But that's not everybody. I would say that it's 50-50, yeah. but it has started some great conversations. I've made new friends with people in my neighborhood, uh, people visiting or neighbors, but that's what creates community is getting to pe know people that you don't know and starting conversations with strangers strangers. I probably wouldn't do that at night, Mo, because no, then it enough. might be a little bit more <laughs> unwelcome. But it does make a community a community. It makes you feel safer when you know Katie lives next door and James is down the street. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a problem, you can go to your neighbor. And with the uptick in violence that we're seeing all over the news, whether it's uh, petty crime, there's been some horrific attacks, these stranger attacks that are new to society, really. I mean, what did we call those before? But now it's becoming more and more common. You know, Having a community around you, I think, is so important. So, yes, Vancouver needs to work on being more friendly to each other and just the people around us and not just your friends. Yeah, and I would actually say that, and not to make this too political, but I do think municipalities play a big role in this and they play a role in terms of cultivating these community spaces where people can gather. And I'm thinking of North Vancouver and the shipyards in particular, where they've created this area where on weekend nights and sort of week weekend afternoons and then going into the night, people gather and you go there and sometimes you miss a week or sometimes you go there and you see the same people and, and you meet people there. And, you know, it's a little more family friendly during the day. And then once the sun is setting, yeah, you know, there are beer gardens and it's a little more adult, but there's never been any issues. And I almost wonder if maybe because of the Granville Entertainment District or perhaps the riots that we've had in Vancouver, there's like a hesitancy to create these spaces because, you Definitely. know, something could happen, right? And something could happen. But I mean, when you put all of that in one place, like Granville, I think it's a little bit different. I mean, the shipyard's purpose built for that. I think it's mm -hmm. great because it's creating something new in North Vancouver. Yeah. Perhaps Granville Entertainment District just needs a new approach. Mm -hmm. um, it's just gotten so decrepit in that part of town. And then I was I was thinking to myself, OK, well, what are, what are some of the other good things? We can't just be negative Nelly, Nellies because there are great things like the shipyards. Some of the other good things that I think have come about that took far too long really a lot a lot of red tape <laughs> sure pandemic patios at restaurants yeah these are so welcome i don't know a business that has open one that doesn't love it or mm -hmm. people that don't want to enjoy it because vancouverites i mean if there's a little rain we'll still sit on a patio absolutely so there are just good, need a little cover that's it but we were so afraid to put people outside because somebody might complain gosh there might be noise and people having fun how could you have that in the downtown core in any mun in municipality yeah but Vancouver's always done that. It's why Indy got cancelled. Mm -hmm. It's too noisy. And then they cancel Indy. And what do we hear? Why don't we have Indy anymore? We're no fun. <laughs> and then we tried to have this esports thing, which turned out to be a grift. But there are a lot of good things that are coming out of the pandemic, I hope, that are mm -hmm. going to make us more social, more friendly, and allow more people to enjoy our city comfortably. Last question, yes or no. 
to the viewer that's watching the show right now, should they go out and when they're outside, say hi to strangers? Yes. Okay. Because I think it opens the door. If somebody smiles at you, you know, they don't necessarily want something from you. And yeah, read the room. Sometimes yeah. it's not. Somebody might be having an argument. Yeah, if they're, with or their if they're in a rush. Or, yeah. yeah. But saying hello to your neighbors and people around you, why not? Why We're a little bit snobby here. And I think it's time, if we want Vancouver to be more fun, we have to be more open-minded ourselves. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to try that myself and I'll report See back how to you goes. how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Fiona, thank you so much. Thank you. Folks, she's an awesome Canadian media personality. I am proud to call her my friend. She is Fiona Forbes. And on Sunday, July 31st, she will be co-hosting the televised broadcast of the Vancouver Pride Parade. You can stream it live on vancouverpride.ca and outtv.ca. For more with Fiona, find This is Van Color on your podcast feed as we are going to record some overtime but for now, stick around because after some business, shorts, do you love them? Well, one of Canada's best criminal defense lawyers is going to make her case on why shorts are the worst. Well, actually, the super serious debate about the super serious things is up next. My name is Mo Amir. This is Van Collins.